everyone, welcome back to my garage and today we're going to be loading up some 45 ACP on my Dillon RL550B. From my previous video loading up the 4570, I thought I really needed to show loading a different caliber because that one made it look like hand loading was extremely hard with the Dillon. It really isn't. Most of that was just the fact that I didn't lube the cases enough. On here, I've got carbide dies. The case is so small, you really don't need to lube it. It's really simple, it's fast, it's easy, and it's a great way to shoot. Uh, you can load up a box of 145 ACP for roughly $25 to $30, or current price in my area, it's $65 a box. So, do the math, and you're going to see why I reload. So I'm going to cut to another view and uh, you can kind of see what it's like. Okay, here we are, a little bit different view, you can see the press a little bit better, I hope. And uh, what we're going to be loading with is a 200 grain Rainier bullet, a little bit softer but they're pretty accurate and they're about the only thing I can get my hands on at this point. The brass is pretty much range brass, I've fired it a couple of times, some of them actually several times. and. Uh, before I turned on the camera, I've already cleaned and resized these. They've uh, all been trimmed to length, so they're ready to go. I'm using bullseye powder and Winchester large primers. I've actually had really good luck with those. I've heard some people haven't, but so far I like them. So, I'm going to get this going. I'm going to go ahead and come up. Resize and normally I deprime, but since I've already done that, and there we go, new primer. Now we're gonna come over here to the powder. Gonna come up. Now I've already checked this, but just to make sure. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to come over here to my scale, I'm going to pour that in there. And what I'm looking for is 4.6 grains. Actually, 4.5 grains. Sorry, 4.6 is what I tried last time. I'm going down a little bit. And I've got 4.5 grains. All right, so that's good. Put that back in. I like the balance scale. To me, it just seems better. Not only that, the balance scale is lifetime warranty, where as digital scales, usually they only come with a one or two year warranty. Unless you want to really spend some crazy money out there, you can buy a four or five hundred dollar scale really quickly, and you really won't get that much out of it. So prefer spending my money on that and it lasts me a lifetime okay hold on let me make sure I primed that case okay we're good now I want to add another case and take a bullet and put it over here and we're ready to go Especially for the first couple of times, I like to check and make sure that I'm priming and uh, just make sure everything's okay. Right now I've got some crap built up down there. Wipe that off. And I actually keep a brush on hand for this. There it is. kind of wipe off some of the extra stuff around it and a little brush like this like this actually came with a shaving kit that I have no clue where it is anymore but it works well for going ahead and dusting off my uh, press so get back into the groove now we've seated our bullet we've got powder you notice I have a little extra light over here that's just for that just so I can see into that case make sure the powder got dropped so, put another bowl, case, and we're ready to go. This time I'm going to crimp. 
Now when you're dealing with 45 ACP, crimp is a strong word. Let me see if you can see it. There we go. You notice there's really not a crimp on that case. And you don't want a crimp. When you crimp a 45 ACP, what you're going to find is you're going to, when the shell ejects and you go to get it later, you're going to see it's all black. And what that is, is your case is not fire forming to your chamber. It's, you crimped it too much. And so it's not able to expand as much as it should. So you just, basically the only crimp you want to put on it is just enough to take the bell out of the casing that you put here in station two. That's it. You don't want anything else. If you put any more, it, you, your accuracy will falter. Your, the, it won't get the uh, velocity it needs. So it's just better just to not put that much crimp on it. And the best way to do it, I've found, is to take a pre-made case and put it, run it up, screw down your uh, crimp die till it touches, clamp it down, and then do a few or do one, see if it does it, actually take a caliper and measure it, and uh, you'll be, it's a little bit of trial and error. Take them out, do five or ten, usually I like to do twenty to, for a good test. Run out, test them, come back, tweak it a little bit. I know that's a pain, but that's kind of what this is all about. All right, so back to this. So I need to actually, we're good to go. All right, got to make sure that while I'm talking, I don't forget. Something. All right, so now we are in full progressive mode. See, this is what I like about this. I mean, it's easy, it's simple, and the Dillon is great for the fact that if you want to do it progressively, you're doing it progressively, just like this is here. But if you want to take the time, and I know a lot of people do, especially for match shooters, yellow. Uh, you can use it as a single stage press. Now, all right. Okay, I had a small primer brass sneak into my large primer brass. That's another thing you got to watch out for, especially on 45s. Federal cases. Some of them have small primer pockets, not large primer pockets. So you have to watch out for those. Sometimes they like to sneak in on me. Thought I sorted them all out, but that one got by. All right. Try this one. And we've already dropped that, so what we're going to do is advance. Actually, let me show you another cool thing about the Dillon. is it's not going to drop powder if there's no shell in there. So, all I've got to do is, technically I could take all this out, but I'm not going to. Hold on. Pull that out. Okay, come back here. Put that back in. Trying to actually show you something. I'm about to mess it up. Okay, pull the case with the powder out, that way nothing's going to happen. I'll put my new case in, run it up, that bullet's already been seated, so nothing's going to happen to it, it's just going to do what it does. Prime. Okay, now I can put the shell with my prime powder in, put the pin back, and advance it and everything's back to normal. 
Now, also, if you want to, you can just advance and just have an empty spot in there, but sometimes that throws me off, so I try not to do that. I mean, the biggest thing you want to do is try and keep a rhythm going, because when something disrupts your rhythm, that's when you're going to find things don't go right. That's when you make a mistake, and 45 ACP is pretty forgiving on mistakes, but you just want to try not to make them in the first place. Alright. Okay. Now that we can actually get through all that. As you can see, with a little bit of hand-eye coordination, as long as you keep an eye on everything, you can actually load at a pretty good pace once you get everything set up correctly. Put that in. I mean, sure, it's not an automatic press. It doesn't go quite that fast, but I prefer being able to advance it on my own. Now, just in case some of you are wondering, it doesn't look like there's powder in here. There actually is. The powder comes up to right about there. I'm only loading 20, maybe a few more later with a different powder, but when you're loading just a few handgun ammo with at 4.5 grains, I'm not even going to use this much powder. I'm going to end up having to dump some back in the bottle. So keep that in mind when you go to do it, especially for handgun powders. You don't ever want to fill that up because it is a pain to get back into the bottle once it's in here. Oh, it's not that big of a pain. The Dillon actually makes it pretty easy. All you got to do is pull these pins, drop this off, and then you can take the whole head out and then just pour it over but you see what I mean is I'd like to be able to have as little powder as possible when I'm doing that. Normally if I want to I can actually go quite a bit faster than this but one thing I found is trying to talk and do a video and load a little bit, it's actually a little more difficult than you think it is. And if you ever try it, you'll understand what I mean. It's really easy to do it, really easy to miss something. Now that right there is Dylan's warning saying I've only got three primers left in there. So we're going to go ahead and remove that, that way you don't have to listen to it. Now. that in. There's one. There's two. Now if you're not sure about whether that is a complete three primers in there, you can actually take a look and you can see whether there's a primer in the arm or not. So when you come down, you can check it. And if you're double sure, do what I'm, you've seen me do it several times in this. Pull it out. Have a look. It's not going to bother anything. It's not going to hurt it. It's actually going to make you a lot more comfortable with your reloads, knowing that there's a loaded primer. You know there's powder. You keep an eye on everything, and it'll all go pretty good. Got a primer. Now another thing you can do is because I'm um, I lost count, but I'm pretty sure there's not a primer in there. Is just don't put a case in. Round it up, and the cup's empty, so I was right. Now if there is, there is no problem with that primer being there. You on a Magnum primer. I've actually had to kind of lift the shell plate up a little bit to clear that primer, but on the large pistol primers, I haven't had that problem. 
and you can index it around it and just go straight to it. And there it is. 20 rounds of ammo. And hope you can actually see some of that. actually pretty simple doesn't take a whole lot of time and uh, that's one of the reasons I bought the Dillon is because I can do anything on this press the only thing this one does not do is 22 rimfire and 50 BMG pretty much everything else it'll do uh, Dillon has a few other presses that are out uh, they're pretty good they just didn't fit my criteria the uh, if you're only doing, the best thing, way I can say is if you're interested in a Dillon press, go to the Dillon website. They actually have a uh, system there that will help you decide if one of their presses is right for you. The uh, All of them are great presses. They even have a really inexpensive one that personally for me, if all I was doing was 30-06, I would have bought that one because... 30-06, you don't want all of this. You want to measure all your powder. You want to, every load, you want to know exactly what is in that case. You, uh, which, by the way, you didn't see me do it, but what, especially when I do bulk loads of 100 or 200 or even just 50, usually I'll every so often I'll pull a case out and I will measure it to see it. I have never, ever had this be off with bullseye with unique or well rl7 i've seen a little bit of fluctuation with but i'm talking it's very small we're we're talking to the tenth of a grain here it's well it'll be like sometimes instead of 48.5 it'll be 48.4 that's how far it's been off that's the most and so their measures are actually really accurate. It's very, it caught me by surprise. I've read where some people weren't that happy with them, but I've had a, it's been great for me. Uh, the Dillon measure system, which I'll actually let you get a good look at it right here. That's what I use. It, I found it to be very accurate. I borrowed a friend's digital scale and it matched it every time. And even one where his scale was reading off by a good little bit. It uh, just because of a, it was a, we had a draft going and his scale was reading the draft and that thing was fine. It did exactly what I needed it to. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be sticking with. So Dillon equipment's been great for me, and the dies are great. When you order a Dillon, you pretty much want to try and stick with Dillon dies when you can, just because their press uses a certain system. Got those flies in here, but their press uses a certain system. That's not a fly; that's a June bug. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> June bugs are annoying. And, uh, but the system's a little bit different on their dies. Most of uh, three piece dies on your average reloader set is going to have a sizing, decapping, expander, and a seating slash crimp. Dylan doesn't like the seating slash crimp part. So, what they did was they have their size and decap die. Now, their powder funnel die is where everything gets expanded. Right here, this little funnel, is what actually does the expanding of the case. Then you go to your straight seating die. That's all this die does, is just seat the bullet. And then, you come over to this one, and that's just for crimp. Now, when you're... Ch Unfortunately, Dylan doesn't have a lot of rifle dies. They pretty much have just three if I remember correctly the 30-06, 308, <coughs> I had 223 
I think that's about it. Uh, there might be one or two more, I'm not sure. I'd have to actually look at the website, but they, uh, for the other ones, they actually suggest you use redding, which so far with my 4570 dies, they've worked great. The only thing is, is I had to order an extra crimp die to work with the flow, and I've got a expander die in there that will never ever get used. So that's the only thing you've got to do. Another thing with the Dillon is caliber changes can be cheap but they can also be really expensive. For me they're really expensive. Mainly because I like the convenience of it. But a caliber change you have your die plate down here at the base. Those average about $42. Then you can get this little kit, which, without the dies, it comes with a head, powder measure, powder, uh, a powder die, stand, and that right there is $100. So you figure in dies, head, stand, plate, you're looking at $200 for doing a die change for adding a caliber. Now, if you don't want to mess with, let's say you want to just get the uh, dies or so, I would go ahead and recommend getting the head. This is one of the cheapest parts of the whole system. The heads, if I remember correctly, are 11 bucks. So they're really cheap and uh, I would recommend doing that just so you don't have to dust your dies again. And then just transfer your powder uh, your powder die over when you decide to do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. As you see, it's getting dark, so it's time for me to go ahead and get ready for work in the morning. Oh, go to sleep so I can get up early in the morning. So, y'all take care.